Student Teachers College, they ask you to kind of plan when you're going into a classroom, plan it in three tiers. Because you're wearing two hats. You're thinking about the instruction, but then you're also thinking about what you're doing as a coach. And then there's the kind of, well, actually third hat, There's this because you're learning from each other. So as you plan your read aloud, think about first the instruction. You might want to just go through and put your sticky notes first. What thread are you going to focus on? Are you going to focus on characters? Are you going to focus on inferencing predictions? What thread are you going to focus on? Then, after that, you want to think about how you're going to divide up the task of teaching it. Because it wouldn't work real well if just one person sat through the whole book. You know what I mean? You guys want to kind of jump in in your triad and then figure out who's teaching what, uh, what part of the book, mm -hmm. okay? Um, to like do jigsaw. that, oh yeah, like Jigsaw, I was going to show you, on the, in your notebook, in your green notebook, on the red flag page, um, you know, Jigsaw is there, but then there's the jump in and the pass on, that like you just kind of wait for a moment and you kind of grab the book and take over. You know, if you're comfortable with that, with your group of people, give it a try. Um, another thing that you could try here would be just be voicing over. That, that's kind of like coaching the coach. Yeah. And so then the other layer, so once you figure out how you're going to divide the task of the read aloud, then think of the coaching methods. Are you going to do the freeze frame where you stop reading and talk to the other coaches? Um, are you going to just voice over as you read? Like when I was reading just now, I told my students that I was going to talk to my teacher friends sometimes and I was going to talk to them sometimes. So think about how you're going to coach, okay? And then if you're observing, the other part that you have to plan is, you know, how are you going to then coach the person who's doing the reading? It's, am I explaining this clearly? Mm -hmm. It's like you're doing a whole bunch of things at one time because you're coaches of coaches. If it were a teacher, it's a little bit different. So if you're watching, you get to practice your coaching strategies. If you're teaching, you get to practice your teaching and your coaching should you choose to. And then in the meantime, we're also trying to refine our instruction. No pressure. <laughs> this is a safe place to try. Again, this, yeah. this can't go wrong. It is simply about take a risk, try a strategy. And also, if you are teaching, if you're coaching, if, like, for example, whenever we were at the Institute, one of the people in our groups really wanted to try the whispering in. So I said, okay, whisper in to me. I didn't choose that. Oftentimes we would ask the teachers, how do you want me to support you? How do you want me to help you or coach you? But she really wanted to try that out, so I let her whisper all day long in my ear while I was doing the read aloud. And it was fine, because that was uncomfortable for her. She wanted to push herself in that area. So really think about a technique that you're pushing yourself in. This is the time to give it a go. Your teachers aren't here. So try something out that um, you may not have ever used before. But it is a little bit, once you get in, it's okay. But oftentimes, again, with only one of you, you're having to maximize your time with your teachers too. And this is a way to do that, is to bring them to So I don't know if you wanted to just begin with the front cover and make that connection for kids. That would be excellent. And look, it's the last thing. And it's the last thing on the It's obviously you wanted many more things. I think the kids can relate totally to that.
It reminds me, when I was little, I used to go to my parents and I used to put my hands behind my back and I used to kind of sway back and forth be like, can I have some ice cream? So I used my body to help my parents know that I really, really needed I something. What I've wanted forever. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, don't worry. I'll take care of it. I promise. I'll water it once a month. No. Water it once a month. What? Everybody knows that puppies need plenty of sunshine and water. We know that. And food. Oh my goodness. It seems to me like Pigeon's just a little bit confused. What do you think Pigeon is confused about? Can you tell your partner? He's like, get sunshine like a plant. Oh, I'm not sure what a puppy needs. Pigeon says, oh, oh, I get it. You don't want me to be happy, do you? You don't want me to take a piggyback ride on my puppy. No, you don't. Of course not. Or play tennis with it. It cannot. It's not a person. Oh, my goodness. It feels airborne. You just don't understand. I'm a puppy-loving pigeon. You know what I've noticed? Look at his speech bubbles. Do you see this one right here? You see this one right here? I've noticed that when I'm reading, the size of the words and the size of the bubbles tell my voice what to do. Did you notice that? Look at it. You just don't understand. I'm a puppy loving pigeon. Let's keep going. Aww, puppies! <laughs> so here we go. I want a puppy. This is the pigeon wants a puppy. Okay, here we go. The pigeon wants a puppy. Oh, hello. You want to read it with me? Let's do it. Go. Oh, hello. How are you? I like him. He's pretty nice, isn't he? Pretty cool. And he says, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to turn and talk how it makes you feel when people are like, Oh, and they, they just really care about you like that. Turn and talk with your partner right now. I want a puppy right here and right now. He's pretty uh, indignant, right? He's pretty you to turn and talk and tell your partner, listen, tell your partner, what do you think the pigeon is feeling right now? This story, the pigeon, is talking to you. So if you have something that you want to say back to the pigeon, it would be totally okay with me if you did that. It would, because I think that's what Mo Williams wants you to be able to do. But as soon as I give you the one, two, three signal, you know like it's time to stop talking back to the pigeon. Okay, and so let's listen to what happens in this story called The Pigeon Wants a Puppy. Oh, hello. hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thanks for asking. By the way, do you know what I want? What? What I wanted forever? What? At least since last Tuesday. What? A puppy! <laughs> puppy, puppy, puppy! Why do you want a puppy so much? Thank you. You know what? I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking, uh, this pigeon is a little bit cuckoo. But I'm also thinking, wait a minute, I have never seen a pigeon that owns a puppy. Have you? No. no. So I want a walrus. What? No. A walrus. So take a minute and think. I'm thinking about the pigeon. Crisscross apple sauce on me. Thank you 
so much perfect. <laughs> surprising <coughs> endings. Did you know authors use surprising endings to help the reader stay engaged and do exactly what you did? You all went, what? Because you were so surprised at the ending. The pigeon wanted a dog at the very beginning, and then at the end, he changed his mind. What does that tell you about our character, Ooh, Pigeon? Turn and talk with your neighbors right now and talk to your neighbors.